This is the Benchmade 810 Contigo. Uh, this is a discontinued Benchmade folder by now. It is uh, a very interesting shape, both in the handle and also in the blade. It has this very, very unique Varen Osborne design blade shape that you see in a couple of Benchmade folders. Uh, obviously the Benchmade 940 comes to mind, which is the smaller EDC version and there is, or was I should say, also the Benchmade Rift with the same blade shape, but a little bit smaller than this one. This is really the larger brother of all of them and the more tactical version uh, with a full 4 inch blade, so 10 centimeters of blade length and a thick 4 millimeter spine. You can see that it keeps a lot of strength up to this point and then it ends in a very fine, fine point but it is very robust to here and it is also a very wide blade so the grind runs really thin behind the edge uh, this is about 0.4 millimeters behind the edge thickness so that would be about 15 to 17 thousandths um, 10 percent of the blade stock thickness behind the edge that's usually what you see in custom knives it's a very well common practice there but uh, not, you don't see that a lot in, in production knives, really. Um, last time I showed you the Native Chief, for instance, that had a thinner blade stock, but a thicker behind the edge uh, material, more material in behind the edge. So this is really unique in a sense that it is ground relatively thin for how thick it is. And I do like that quite a bit. It is, uh, it is a well cut cutting blade. If I manage to get a stick off this tree, so it slices really well, but also if you need it to be, it's still strong up here. So you can still do a little bit of prying. Yeah, I said that you shouldn't pry with your knives, but yeah, sometimes you do. You can pry some light stuff. You, obviously, you still need to be reasonable. It's still a knife and not a pry bar, but sometimes you can do that. But yeah, it's really, it's really thin and slicey behind the edge, which is one of the things I like. It takes quite a while getting used to this blade shape because it is a little bit unusual. Uh, I'm not sure if you have googled Varen Osborne designs. He made a lot of really great custom knives. They don't really look like the Benchmade knives um, that he uh, came out with. And yeah, it's a unique blade shape. It is a little bit of a mixture between a drop point and a sheep's foot. Kind of a unique blade style. It has a center line point so it is very pointy but it also is very strong up here in this because of this uh, this slight ramp here. It is difficult you know if you're a blade designer making something unique something that has never been done before but I think Varen Osborne uh, really achieved that with his designs and as you as you probably know some knife designs like the Benchmade 940 will always be around in the knife world I think they're just so unique so he has achieved a lot uh, he sadly has passed away by now I think like eight years ago 2015 something like that he passed away and uh, yeah Benchmade a couple years ago also discontinued this design which is kind of sad because this is um, they don't really have a big tactical folder that's that slicey behind the edge uh, they have the Adamas now which is has a thinner blade stock and a thicker grind so arguably cuts worse than this. Even though the Adamas design just by its lines I think is a more cooler looking design this is arguably the better performer and uh, yeah I think Benchmade is missing a knife like this in their lineup now. But yeah they have, they have a lot of other good knives but this is, uh, this is one that I particularly like. Like I said it took me a while to get used to this it is so unique but it works really well if you need a knife that's robust on the spine but thin behind the edge uh, it's really good for that uh, it has a very unusual handle design as well you have that big two finger choil normally you only have one finger choil this is like a two finger choil and then your other two fingers rest here and then you have this point this part of the handle uh, it, it is very like I said the whole knife is unusual at first it's very it's just so uncommon that you have to get used to it but once you do it is really a fine fine folding knife and it is it combines uh, slicing with strength in a very positive way I would say so yeah uh, G10 on the scales grippy G10 it comes with a deep carry pocket clip so not a lot of the handle sticks out 
of your pocket. I had a, for the longest time I had a different Benchmade clip up here that would uh, show a little bit more knife so you can grab it easier. But actually I'm fine with deep carry clip. I don't think it's the perfect clip for this knife but it actually, yeah it works. It has a aluminium backspacer and uh, a carbide glass breaker. So this knife uh, oftentimes when I do have to travel uh, a lot with my car I take this knife with me because it's a great uh, emergency tool with that glass breaker back here. There are not a lot of knives that are comparable in the knife industry to this knife. I think the Microtech Socom would come to mind because it also has a glass breaker and a fixed spine. So, But this is um, yeah, maybe the Demco 8020 fixed spine knife also. But I, I think from all of these knives the 810 is the sliciest because it just has the finest grind the least material behind the edge that's just it's just so unique in that way and it's hard to always put it on camera how slicey the knife is but this just goes through material with ease there's not a lot of binding but if you need to have a strong blade you still have and you can still do a little bit of the harder use stuff as well uh, the steel on this is CPM M4 steel so uh, what is CPM M4 well that's kind of easy to explain actually because uh, you have two kinds of steel really you have stainless steels and you have carbon steels and uh, if you take the carbon steels they also divide in like two main branches you have the low alloy steels that would be stuff like your 1075, 1095, 01, 8 2 steel, um, 52100 is also a very well known low alloy steel and then you have the high alloy steel and the high alloy steels range from steels like A2 all the way to CPM 3B and then you also have M4 in this category and if you I would put M4 and actually also in the same category with stuff like Kruver, uh, CPM Rex 45, K390 those are all very similar steels uh, some from different manufacturers and they all have one thing in common that they are all like most carbon steels they're very tough so if you take the low alloy steels for instance the 1095s and everything they're very tough but they lose an edge also quickly and they rust in addition to that depending on the heat treatment and the, on the grind they can hold the edge a little bit longer but they're not super good at edge holding and then the high alloy steels they have a lot of toughness still but they also keep their edge for a long time yet they still rust so and this is actually what CPM M4 is is a high edge retention high toughness steel that is not co good at corrosion resistance but in this case it is coated so it's not a big deal it's also it's also a teflon coat i should know uh, teflon coating so it, it rubs off relatively quickly as you can see i don't use this knife overly a lot but if i use it i really enjoy it uh, if you hard use this knife on a daily basis the coating will come off in in a matter of weeks i would say or days even uh, depending how you use it but yeah uh, M4 is a great steel in my opinion I like those high toughness steels a lot better than the high edge retention low toughness steels like the whole S40V family all the stainless steels basically that have a lot of edge retention they don't have a lot of toughness down at the edge and this one has which is also the reason why you can grind it that thin and that's just a great thing I think Varen Osborne really worked a lot with M4 he was one of the knife makers that really popularized that steel and uh, yeah for good reason it's a good steel for a knife like this uh, if you need high toughness high edge retention uh, this is the kind of knife that you send you know you send a soldier into co in combat zone and he, he brings that knife it, he doesn't has to have to worry about sharpening or chipping a lot until he comes back because it holds that edge for a good long time now it also has the access lock like all Benchmade knives really or most of them um, which generally speaking is a really strong locking system because you just put uh, uh, a bar across the spine which is also why it's called a crossbar lock and uh, yeah that makes for a really solid lockup. The only thing I don't like about the access lock and that's there are a lot of access lock versions on the market like Microtech just, uh, just released one of them that has a um, one coil spring down in the middle I think that's the more that, that's the better way of doing it the two Omega springs I don't know I just don't like the the way Benjamin does their access locks um, 
yeah, Omega Springs are just not as reliable. And then a tactical knife that you send somebody into a combat zone with, you really don't want to have two flimsy springs in there that can break at any time. So, yeah, that's the only drawback of this knife is that how Benchmade does their access lock. So, yeah, I know a lot of people are really happy with Benchmade and how they do things. I always think it's kind of a lazy way of doing this locking system because if you put a coil spring down in the middle, it's so much more reliable and still uh, ambidextrous and all that stuff like this knife is. And yeah, it's easy to open and close with one hand, uh, whether that's the left or the right side. So yeah, it's very ambidextrous. Tip, uh, tip up only though with this knife. It's not a bad thing on this one. Uh, yeah, the Benchmade 810 Contego. A really great knife, I think. Sadly discontinued. Uh, this will be for a long time in my collection. I can't see this going anywhere now. I don't know if this would be, like if I had to make a list of top 10 knives of all time, I don't know if it would make that list, but it is a really close contender, I would say. Um, the only drawback here really is the access lock system that I personally don't like as much as other locking systems. But uh, yeah, apart from that, it's a outstanding knife. And uh, yeah, I had a Benchmade 940 long time ago. And the 940, because it's a narrow blade, is much thicker behind the edge and much worse at slicing. This is the much better slicer. Here the, the lines of this blade shape really come to a full expression because of that thick spine, but that thin grind because it's such a wide blade. So sometimes you need a little bit of a larger knife to express what you're trying to do. And the 810 is the perfection of this Baron Osborne blade shape that is so unique and so unusual. Yeah, that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching and maybe we see each other in another video. Next time with a different large EDC folder.